to back in the door actually. Okay, that is the um, the base plates for the engine mount to cut out. Nice and easy, it's super easy having SolidWorks and a CNC plays. So here we have it. Um, passenger side, driver's side, and then these are the plates that go on the actual mount. There's me drawing. That's the drawing of this plate. I changed it a little bit, as you can see in the drawing there. I was going to taper it up, keep it so it was the same sort of profile in and around here. Um, I decided to go against that because obviously I'm going to have plates welded off of this to then join onto them, sort of like that. Um, I'll do those centerpiece plates up uh, while the engine's mount is sitting in the car. Um, the one thing is the 3K or the K series in the most of the Corollas uh, are offset by the looks of it. I think from memory it's the passenger side by 20 to 30 mil. Um, I've got to double check that. I've centered the crank and the outputs, well, the center to the crank and the gearbox in the chassis rail, and then lined up the fan shroud. And it's looks like it's got about 20 mil to the passenger side. I double checked with, with my brother because he's got a couple of KEs there. Um, he, he had a loose cross memory, said yes, it's definitely offset, but he can't remember what side. So. I've still got to do a bit more pondering about that, but I needed to do these plates before I can do any of that anyway. So, head back to the house and we'll have a bit more of a look at it, I suppose. All right, back at the shed. Got the plates on. That one I had to sort of open the holes up a little bit. As I said, uh, the what, last video or the video before, plasma cutter has a bit of hard time cutting small fine detail holes, so the holes sort of got like a bit of a high spot in it where the start stop is. So just got in there with a round file, knocked that out and she bowled it straight on. So I've been doing a bit of measuring for the mounts and a bit of cardboard work. So this is for the passenger side, that's the base. It'll go across there and then two plates. Uh, this line here is a fold line because it'll sort of end up sort of like that coming off the engine mount going to the mount on the block roughly like that ish yep um the passenger side's pretty easy that's literally just a drop down plate um the engine hoist sagged on me that's why i've got plus 10 written there because it moved over that way 10 mil so i've got to make this face 10 mil higher they're both the same for this side because um you have a look the actual mount on the engine blocks lower than the mount on the chassis rail so. okay that's all the plates cut out for the engine mounts passenger side driver side the driver side these two cheek plates need to be folded along here i've put a little indentation in there that one i went a little funny on the plaza i'll clean it up and you see the little little divot there to that point the fold line same on that that's the base connecting the uh engine mount to the block these ones, the passenger side, are a little bit different because the mounting plates are so far apart, these are actually going to step down. So, engine mount up here, engine block down there, and it steps down. And then I've just got this um, 40 by 40 brace plate that'll go in the middle like that in between the two. Um, that should be enough. It's all 6mm plate. I mean, this engine and gearbox combo weighs, uh, what is it? I worked it out. It's like 250 kilos, which is nothing. Um, so, stage one of this swap is engine mounts, and then we'll tackle the gearbox cross member. So, once the mounts are in, we'll start looking at the gearbox cross member. But I've got another thing that literally turned up yesterday, which I didn't think was going to come this quickly. Um, if you've seen on my Instagram, or maybe even if you're on one of the Diatsi pages on Facebook, you'll know what I'm already talking about. I'll go fish it out, and we'll have a bit of a yarn about that. So, 
we'll be dancing around between the F10 and Sarge um, probably for the rest of the episode yeah <laughs> Alright, as you can see, we've got a snorkel. Um, my boss has got a HD47, really neat truck actually. And I was over there, what was I doing? Oh, dropping off his paddy car after I've done some major work to it. And um, it's obviously got a snorkel on it. And I had an inkling that possibly the windscreen angle on a scat's the same as a 45 or 47 or 40 in general. I just Obviously, didn't have anything to check it with, and you ask a few people, they're not that helpful. So, I've learnt the diets again. Don't fucking trust what you read on the internet. Just go and look at yourself. So, I measured his up, and lo and behold, the windscreen angle is exactly the same, which is great. Both the rake, 14 and a half degrees, but also the lay-in at the top. So, it's about five degrees different top to bottom, which... I don't know if you can, probably won't be able to see it. Lays it about the same amount. So it's going to go there. Um, so, yeah, roughly there. Snorkel head will be about level with the top of the roof. The one thing I'll have to do, I'll have to heat up the back here with the heat gun and just dimple it for that bolt, I think it is. It's sitting on top of that. But that'll be okay. Push that in. Um, I may have to move the indicator down. That's mainly why the, one of the reasons why the guard's not on here. It's also not painted. Um, one, because I was, I had the idea of probably putting a snorkel on it, so I knew I was gonna have to hack a hole in it. I didn't want to hack through clean paint. The other reason was it had a little bit of rust down in the bottom of the guard lip. I've fixed that ages ago. Um, and I thought I might be having to move the indicator around. It'll just be easier with bare metal. So I have to go dig the guard out of the shed. We'll fry him on there and um, we'll start measuring out. It's obviously not gonna sit hard up against the rain gutter like that. It'll probably sit a little bit further forward, which will be okay. So I pretty much just gotta get that hole roughly in the middle. Um, lucky for me, the Blizzard air box is already on the passenger side, which is great. Um, factory diesel scats, they're on the drivers, which would be a bit of a pain and Land Cruiser snorkels only come in passenger side exit, which is a bit shit, but the, I have found a mob doing them in Malaysia. They're fiberglass though. I'm not a real big fan of fiberglass snorkels, especially with the way I drive off road. Um, I do, and I'm not a, I absolutely hate stainless snorkels. I cannot stand it. Unless, like you got a four drive that's making big power and you, you're collapsing your plastic snorkel in. I understand you absolutely need a snorkel. It doesn't change the fact they look like fucking shit. Um, I've always been a fan of the plastic, just black plastic. Nobody does anything for a scat other than, as I said, in Malaysia. Um, but yeah, like if it's a fiberglass one and it fractures on the back where you can't see it and you go through a deep water crossing, now it's sucking water in and you just don't know these, you know, rotary, rotary molded ones. Um, this one's low density polyethylene, so it is pretty malleable. Uh, you can see here, that's a cutout for the vents in the 45. Not gonna need that. The indicator's gonna slip in there. I'll have to see with the guard on. If it only covers like a little bit of the top of the indicator, we'll just leave it. Um, if it's gonna cover all the indicator, this thing's probably gonna be pretty sketchy as it is on, 30, on uh, 35s and Hilux diffs, so I don't really wanna be drawing too much attention myself, so I'll probably just cut the indicator out and just move it around, which is nothing major. Yeah, low density polyethylene, so I'll be able to mould it a little bit in spots, but you can heat it with a heat gun if I needed to change its angle. Lucky for me, I don't have to, which is fucking great. The other thing is, if you've got a Rocky, you can use a um, like Land Rover Defender, like 90 series Defender snorkel, the, um, they're basically the same shape as that. The one issue is the Rocky's windscreen lays back at 30 degrees. So you can't use them on a scat. And 30 degrees will be too much to stretch this. It'll collapse in at the, at the base. So, it's looking like it's gonna fit and fit fucking well, which is great, because I hate ill-fitting shit. It obviously, like all snorkels, comes with a template. I'm pretty much only gonna use it for the holes, because, well, 
there's no fucking panel markings on there that's going to match any of my shit. Like obviously, that's the back of the guard of the 45. That's the vent, and then that's the fresh air door vent you kick open underneath the dash. So it's only going to be the little holes, the hole saw hole, which is going to be a place in my case because I don't have a 105 mil hole saw. These three holes are the bolts to bolt it on. This rear bolt, unfortunately, is going to be like there, and I can't really reach it unless I drill from the inside and then pop a rubber grommet in it. Um, we'll see. I'll just see how it goes. If the two are going to hold it pretty pretty well, because it's got the bracket up on the A pillar there, um, the two are going to hold it pretty well. I'll just leave it. If it's going to be a bit rattly because I hate rattles and squeaks, but like, this thing's going to fucking rattle and squeak anyway. It's what 40 years old. Um, I'll just hit it with a step drill on like mark it, drill through, hit it with a step bit on the inside so I can get like a because it comes with pretty big um, guard washers in the kit. Um, I'll just like silicon the washer and the nut into the head of the um, socket and then bolt it on. It's just a little annoying that it's going to end up there. But as I said, they don't make them for scats, so you just you deal with the hand you dealt. You just make it happen. So. I don't know whether I'm going to do that first or clean up those engine mount plates and then get the engine tacked in on that. I'd really like to get the engine done because then I can um, start looking at gearbox cross member. I'll take you under there and have a look once it's all set up. But just by rough preliminary, preliminary measurements, it's looking like we're going to have pretty much a dead flat belly on that F10, which is probably overkill for something on 33 inch tyres and unlocked. but. I've always wanted something with a flat belly that you can just grade over rocks. So the gearbox cross member, fingers crossed, will probably just be one flat sheet of 10 mil or 12 mil plate, probably 10 mil, and then I'll just fold the edges up. Um, pretty much the same. I'm just going to copy like a um, Superior Engineering or um, Trail Gear Off Road Hilux flat cross member, which is what they are. They're um, 10 mil plate. The edges are folded up, so it gives it a bit of rigidity. Got a folder in the workshop. It does 12 mil plate. Done. Um, so. I really want to get the engine knocked up in that, but now I've got the snorkel, I super want to get it fucking mounted on this. I don't know, I'll have a think. It's all got to get done. Alright, so I decided to do the snorkel first, or at least get the holes done. Some rough measurements, positioning, I marked it on the ute, and then um, double check square lines, because um, the front of the ute's sitting a little bit down at the moment, because we had a lot of rain, and it's the ground's made of fucking porridge so uh, use the template the mark center squared it off that's the top of the snorkel I want it to be below the radius of the guard which it's going to be um, then those two bolt holes uh, this one was a little bit out so I just redrew it which is alright and I looks like the snorkel is going to come down to about there uh, so I'll probably definitely be moving that indicator like down and back here possibly but now I've got to find a radius template because it's 85 millimeters. I've got to cut the hole. Um, I'll find something around here so I can get it actually cut out round. Bang those holes in it. We'll throw it back on the ute and see how she goes. Remember to turn your hair off.
it's cold. Sweet. Fits up pretty well, eh? I've only just got it sort of finger tied on there at the moment, just with those two bolts. Still got a bit of play in it to pull it back to match the windscreen angle. It's pretty loose. But uh, that's exactly what I was aiming for. And that guard indicator is completely covered. <laughs> there it is up underneath there. So I don't know if I want yeah, I might, to... I might have to move it down fucking here. Cut it out and move it there or something. I don't know. I'll have a think. I'll leave this for now. And uh, we'll do the mounts on the F10. Man, I'm happy with that. It's so good. Now, it did get supplied with this bracket to mount the top half up here. Um, that's not going to work, so I'll have to just make another one. All good. But I think with that top bracket and those two, I won't have to worry about that third. I moved it forward a little bit just so I didn't have to worry about indenting the snorkel around that bolt head. Um, yeah, looks good. I fucking dig it. Exactly what I wanted. Got the mounts tacked up. Passenger side, driver side. I've um, welded the back side of that. So uh, it's not going to warp too much when I start putting the uh, gusset plates in. Two gussets in there. Bang, bang. So we'll start the weld out. That one's going to be a little bit more tricky because it's pretty tight. Uh, should be okay. I'll get the torch in there. It'll be just a bit Bit of fiddling, that's all right. I know this one's a bit closer to the bolt hole, so I'll have to just warp mine my um, weld size on the inside and around there. If it worse comes to worse, I'll just burr the base of the weld a little bit if I need to. So, I'll suit up, and I'll have a go with this. That's the engine mounts done. Got one more bolt to do, and we can get rid of this engine hoist. Alright. Sweet. Will it sit? Yes, it will. Fuck yeah, that's mad. I'm pretty pumped up. <sighs> that is a 3K mounted in an F10. I'll walk you around the mounts now that they're together so you can sort of see how they work. But, man, that's good. They pretty much worked exactly how I thought. I just had to, um, that one there, I just had to notch it a little bit around the oil pressure switch. I knew I was going to have to, but I didn't know how much until the mount was made. So I just um, took it back in and hit it with the hand plaz. Notched it out, cleaned it up with the grinder. Uh, they're not painted. I'll take them, there's a bit of spatter in that all over. I'll take them to the workshop, give them a hit with the, um, in the glass cabinet, clean them right up and then we'll paint them up. But for now, that's them done. So, scoop you off the tripod and uh, we'll take you a walk around so you can see what's going on here. Might be a wee bit hard to see, but there we go. So that's what I was saying about the engine block mount on the um, passenger side being lower than the chassis. So I had to do like a drop down dog leg. This one was pretty easy. It was pretty much straight across. I uh, just had to match the angles on the mounts. If you're able to see there. So, like that so those cardboard templates come in handy I notched this as I said I notched this out for access to the oil pressure switch if it ever fails I probably didn't need to take that much out but I thought better to be safe than sorry so now 
might have a go at the gearbox cross member. We'll climb underneath and I'll show you what I mean about the flat belly. I've got to put an angle gauge on the output flange of the T case, match it to the pinion flange of the diff, um, and then I can just jack the gearbox up and down, work out where my cross member's got to go and make one. So, yeah. All right. Here's the factory SCAT or F10 gearbox cross member. As you can see, the puck for the gearbox mount and the mounts to the chassis are almost on the same height, with within about 10 mil. So that's good. Now, what I was saying about a flat belly is you don't want anything hanging down past your chassis rail. So that mount there will go. That there, that's a side support mount for the factory Daihatsu transfer case. It's cast iron and it's driver's side heavy, so they've just got an extra little puck that sits on that angle. Just takes a bit of the torque twist out of the gearbox, so I'll cut that off because I don't need it. There's the gearbox mount plate there on the chassis, and as you can see, you follow it along, and it's all tucked up pretty high, other than just the last little tail section of the T-case there. Like one little bolt, that's nothing major. And then the next one is obviously, if I hit that, I'm going to hit the fucking spring mount there. But that's all right. So my plan is 10 mil plate to there. I'll have to build a mount off my transfer case adapter coming down and then just straight across there so it acts as a bit of a skid plate. Um, I can knock a bit of meat out of that corner there, but that's still higher than that rear point there, so I probably won't bother. I still got to clean up the RTV. I spooged all over this. I didn't. I hate oil leaks, so I just covered everything in it. So yeah, we might start looking at that. I'll have to probably buy a sheet of ten mil. Oh, there might be some liner in the workshop. But how's this for hand welded chassis, eh? Still got slag in the weld there. Porosity, lack of penetration. So that mount's only held on by that lump of slag there, and that little tack there. And the, it ain't much better on the back side. But, well, she's a 74 or 75 model, so it's to be expected. I'll later on just nip through them. Pop that mount off, don't need it anyway. This shows you how far I've clocked this up. So the Hilux gearbox mount is a V, so the bottom of the transfer case is normally there. Let's see if I can get a better angle at it. So see where my adapter plate is there? that would be parallel to the ground. So I've clocked it up a fair bit to give me that. I'm um, not too worried about oil starvation, it'll still hold a fair, fair amount of gear oil. And luckily the Daihatsu's have already, see they notched the um, gearbox tunnel for the tail shaft, so I won't have any tail shaft clearance issues. Just straight down to the diff once that block of wood's out of the way, and we'll be good to go. Um, yeah, so I'll start having a bit of a draw up of that and having a ponder. And if it gets too hard, I might do some painting on Sarge, we'll see. Alright, got an idea worked out for the pedestal for the gearbox cross member mount. Um, I'm going to use this scrap piece of 50 by 100. Uh, it's 5 mil. It'll be good enough. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to use the F10's gearbox mount flipped upside down. So originally this side bolted to the gearbox. And then these studs hung through the cross member. I don't want that because they're going to get sheared off. So I'll cut this that wide. Um, and then I'll be able to nut and bolt that to my flat belly cross member. And then use a uh, countersunk cad socketed cap screw in the bottom of it so it won't get knocked off by rocks. So I'll have a go at that and we'll show you what she looks like when I'm done with her. All right, you can see my uh, temporary timber cross member clamped in there. Just needed something flat. There's the flipped Daihatsu gearbox mount, and then the mount I just made, just tacked in place. Um, I want to pull the motor and box back out of this to clean up a bit of the wire and that in the engine bay, um, and scotch pot the engine bay so it looks a bit prettier. Get all the rust runs off it. So I'll weld that out when the motor and box is back out of it. Um, so that's most that's most of the mounts done this gearbox mount will be easy that's just flat bang bang job done if i get motivated i'll trim this fucking lip off down here but i probably won't end up doing that 
The other issue I'm probably going to run into is the Hilux transfer case output, which is a bit hard to see there. I'll get the jack handle out of the way. It's centered. And the Daihatsu wasn't. So there's this hump in this chassis rail there. And it's offset to one side. So the tail shaft's going to hit that. So I'll have to sort that out once I get a tail shaft. <sighs> More stuff. Oh, well, what do you do? All right. Now that we've got the engine and gearbox mount sorted, I just pop the gearbox factory Daihatsu gearbox crossman back in it, let it down. Uh, the pinion angle's wrong, but that's all right. At least it's all sitting under its own weight. I need to get that done to work out if I had clearance for the exhaust manifold. Turns out I don't. This hub it's just too bulky. It's pretty much either going to end up on the outside of the frame or directly on top of it so I can run the stock intake manifold though that's fine there's plenty of clearance around that stock air filter so it looks all nice and rigid I was thinking about putting the F10 air filter on there um, but I'll probably just run the KE one uh, so it looks like it'll be extractors and then I might have to give them the cut and sort of tuck them in under um, because yeah, that just just points in all the wrong places, unfortunately. And to muck around and like slash cut that to get it so it'll tip down or something would be a lot of effort. Extractors for these things are pretty cheap. I think I've seen a few sets for around the two hundred dollar mark. So we'll probably go that route. And I've also got to modify the sump. Now that it's mounted, didn't know exactly where it was going to sit, obviously, until the engine mounts were done. Um, it's got 10 mil clearance to the diff, and there's three inches of up travel in those springs. So I'll have to knock that corner out of it. So I'll have to drain it, pull the sump off, work out where the pickup is, and then cut the sump. But that's I figured I'd have to cut the sump, being that it's a slant motor, and the sump's pretty much pointing directly at the diff. So, so that's okay. Just slowly taking bites out of that elephant but it's looking good one thing is um, the radiator in the Daihatsu is a lot closer to the fan than it is in the KE so I'll probably have to make new radiator mounts I've got a bit of room I can come forward um, I'm hoping to retain the factory fan shroud there's the K20 radiator with the F10 radiator mount soldered on it I've done that a little while ago um, and then I just painted it, paint it up again. That way, you know, the fan shroud will go straight, straight on it. That's partly how I line the motor up is with the fan shroud. Um, but when you put the rat in, it's it's very, very close to the fan, as you can see. And the fan shroud is very deep, so I could mount it there and then mod the fan shroud, or I can modify the mounts and bring it a bit further forward. I've got a bit of fat in it. I've got about 50 mil I can come forward. Uh, I'm still going to have to modify the fan shroud. Bit of a shame. Um, there's just the nose on this is a lot shorter than the KE unfortunately. I think the KE20's rad was actually um, on the outside of the radiator support and the fan shroud went through it from memory. So I've got it back here. Yeah. So that's that's the K20 fan shroud. You can actually you can see how steep it is, um, which is a bit of a bugger. It's 100 mil. I've got there. I've got 20 mil clearance to the fan, so I would run at that. But then that I won't be able to put fan shroud on. So if we bring it 50 mil forward and maybe cut that 50 mil down. I don't know. I've got to have a bit more of a think of it. Do I want to run a fan shroud? Is it going to get hot? Probably not. The K is like the K or the 3K engine never really succumbed to any poor heating issues. Um, neither did the one liter actually. A lot of people blow them up, but I can't say I ever have. Um, and mine never got hot. And when you're on the highway, you're doing 90 Ks an hour, just wringing the neck out of it. So I honestly never had an overheating issue. The radiator cores were the same size and everything. So, 
Yeah. Well, I overthink to see if I want to run the fan tree out or not. I'd like to because I want to retain that sort of factory look. But then the F10 didn't have a fan shroud on it anyway when I bought it, so will it really matter? I don't know. I've got an F20 fan shroud over there, actually. But it's fiberglass. Might get that and have a look at it. Right, you can see there, that's the um, radiator hoses that were on this motor and radiator. You can see how much closer the fan is to the... Um, engine than the KE but when you put pop the rad support back in you can see I've got it lined up with bolt holes and that I've got about that much space in it so if I remake those mounts and pull it hard up against the um, apron there I reckon I'll be able to put it in with the fan shroud so that'll be pretty cool I'll just have to unfortunately I'll lose there's a nice little bash plate there I'll lose that but that's okay uh, nothing really in the way steering wise um, that's the battery tray I was thinking of moving that anyway you can't really put a decent sized battery in that tray um, they later went to uh, batteries under the bonnet they first moved them um, back here a bit so you get like a decent sort of N50 ish sort of battery in it and then they went under the seat after that because they needed a wider radiator for the diesels so I might pop those mounts off and then push the rad up against here and we'll see uh, see what the hoses look like and if the fan shroud will go on her. Now she's just sitting in there loose. It's got to come up a little bit like that. Cap's still in the right spot. But we got it boys. Mission accomplished. It'll go in with stock K K20 radiator hoses. All I've got to do is make mounts. I'll come. I'll do a 90 degree bracket there, off the uh, inside of the rad support. Uh, same at the bottom there. It's below the rad support, uh, and then I'll just have to do like a post coming up here to that mount there. But that was a lot easier than I thought, actually. Uh, not bad. It's getting that stock look about it again. Mm. Jeez, please hang on to her. After a bit of fiddling, this is what we come up with. So, just angle, and then hang down below. Bam, bam. I don't have all matching nuts to bolt it up. I'll sort that out when I get to work on Monday. Uh, this one, I'm gonna cut down the original mount and just weld it on there pretty much. I'll just cut it down so that bolt hole lines up there. Um, I'm gonna nut set the apron and bolt them all in i was going to plug weld it but i don't like the idea of welding shit to a 40 odd year old car for no fucking reason so we'll nuts hurt them i've got heaps of bolts sitting there so we'll do that and that'll be that done and the drive line can come back out and i can finish weld that gearbox mount Get a good hit on sheet metal. It'll just flex it out of the way. Well, that's not a bad one. Call me cordless gear still in Sydney. Stuck in lockdown. So we're using this old bell. Gets hot and smokes, so. And it's always on hammer pretty much. I don't even know if we get this in here. That's in and mounted. So top and bottom mounts there, nut sort of bolted, lower mount, nut sort of bolted, cut that mount, welded it on. Done. Nice and solid. So I'll pull all them out, pull the motor back out, fix it up. 
finish weld that gearbox cross member and then I'll take these mounts, the engine mounts to the workshop uh, Monday and get them blasted and painted so they look all pretty and then uh, still got to do tail shafts and the floors in it but once the motor's back in and the mounts are done um, I'll be able to box all the nose back up so it looks all nice and flash again so that's good and we'll get a bit of stuff laying around my fucking backyard and shed and house back on this car which would be great but um, that'll probably be it for this app uh, we'll catch these guys on the next one when I'll be doing again god knows what whatever we'll see you